Welcome back to Therapy Thursday. Today we're going to start a two-part blog on IT band syndrome. Now this is an important discussion for a couple of reasons. First off, it's one of the most common running injuries affecting up to 12% of the population. And secondly, it's an area of high concentration in the sports medicine world right now with a lot of, of uh, very prominent authors weighing in with their two cents on what they think actually causes IT band syndrome and second on how to potentially fix it. So we're going to take you through a quick anatomy review talk about a couple of the previous theories and why recent research shows that they may, may potentially be wrong. And third, talk about a couple of the controversial belief systems out there, like whether or not you can actually stretch your IT band and whether foam rolling, particularly on the bottom outside part of your leg, is a good or a bad thing. So we'll briefly discuss the functional anatomy of the iliotibial band. This thickened white seam here is what the IT band looks like on this application called visible anatomy. If we swing around the front, we can see that it's distinctly on the side of the body. It's made up of two major muscles, primarily at the top. The first one being the TFL, and you can see that it's so intimately related with the IT band that it's hard to differentiate between the IT band seen here and the TFL on this app anyways. The gluteus maximus is the second contributor to the IT band itself. You can see the slips continuous on the back side. The muscle that's in between is of great importance, and you'll see why in a few moments, that being the gluteus medius. Now, the important aspect of IT band syndrome is the fact that the area you typically feel pain is way down at the bottom. So you can see that it extends all the way down below your knee joint. The area of pain typically is a very distal or lower part of the outside of your thigh bone. So now we've reviewed the three prevailing, prevailing theories of IT band syndrome and what may cause it, and we've also reviewed some of the anatomy. It's time to de debunk some common myths. Myth number one is that there's a bursa in between the IT band and the femur, which is your thigh bone. There's no consistent findings in anatomic studies that show that. Myth number two is that you can stretch or lengthen your IT bone band. Think of your IT band as a thickening of something called the fascia lata of your leg. Fascia is like saran wrap, so similar to my pant leg here. Your IT band is just a thickening of that fascia. Fascia is not going to stay lengthened for any period of time, so stretching will not influence that, and neither will foam rolling. Now, that leaves us with two prevailing theories. One, that it's a friction syndrome, or two, that it's compression. To be a friction syndrome, the IT band would have to flick forward and back, and that's likely what you've heard in the past. However, the IT band is firmly anchored to that thigh bone. The fact that it's firmly anchored means that it can't have relative motion and forward and back on the same thing that it's anchored to. It's just too firmly attached to it. What it does do, however, is exert a little bit of medial compression, meaning it can compress down. Instead of moving forward and back, it compresses in. There is highly innervated tissue at the bottom of your leg here between your IT band and your femur that when it compresses down repetitively, it can irritate it and cause a pain signal. It also likely causes a signal to your hip to loosen up, and that's what we're going to focus on next week, so stay tuned for that. So, that begs the question, what are we doing foam rolling at the bottom of our knee for these injuries? If it's a compression-based syndrome, foam rolling at the bottom outside part of your knee is going to do nothing but make that compression worse, make your pain last longer, and it being more intense. Foam rolling at the top, a lot of runners will say, hey, that feels really good, and we're typically okay with that, though we're unsure on why it actually feels good. We're not sure about the mechanism itself. Next week, we're going to attack some exercises at the hip that will influence your IT band and can help you cure this injury by yourself at home.